What's up YouTube, what's going on guys? So fourth video in the uh, DUP Submax programming series. If you haven't seen uh, the first videos, really the overview and the squat video, go watch that because I'm gonna actually blaze through this one and you're not gonna understand anything I'm talking about and how to read this. Uh, most of you have been following along, so I'm just gonna get right into it. Just like all the other videos, same setup, same explanation of how to read the board. So nothing too fancy, so we can just get into it. Today we're going over the sumo deadlift, which is programmed differently than the uh, conventional deadlift. Uh, at least for me, I do it. The conventional deadlift induces a lot more fatigue, and therefore you have to program it um, a little bit differently than you could with the sumo deadlift. Sumo deadlifting, we can get away with doing a little bit more volume to push the results. Um, for conventional, think a uh, little goes a long way. With sumo, we can push it a little bit more. Um, so how are we gonna program the sumo deadlift? Well, just like the conventional deadlift, we are only deadlifting twice a week. I find any higher than that, even on, on genetic freaks who can withstand quite a bit of abuse on their bodies, um, anything more, especially in the sumo, the hips are gonna start going. You don't get any extra results because the amount of volume you can do in a deadlift in a week anyway is really not gonna necessitate a three times a week frequency. You'd basically just be splitting this up into three days. Um, to me, I only add in frequency if there is a reason to add volume. Um, outside of some slight motor learning skills and things like that, you're really not gonna induce anything extra uh, from going at a higher frequency. So for deadlifts, uh, even sumo, we still keep it two times a week. However, it's gonna be more um, volume inducive than uh, what we did with the conventional deadlift. So up here, it's almost exactly the same. We got our competition deadlift, uh, triples for the top set that first uh, block, uh, same undulation with the RPE, so we're going RP6, then RP7, and then we reset for a week back to RP6, and then finish up the block with an RP8, really big lift. Um, then we got our back offs uh, at set percentages, starting at 72, working all the way up to 78%. So nothing really different there from the conventional to the sumo. And as the blocks go on, they're exactly the same. We got doubles and then singles, and the back offs always stay a little bit higher in volume. So nothing too special there. Um, however, what does change for the sumo deadlift is gonna be beltless paused work that we do these first two blocks, okay? So the first four weeks, and then the second four weeks, we are gonna be doing beltless pause sumo deadlift. Now this, I get weary with putting specific variations into general programs because most of the time a variant is aimed at something to do with the individual. Maybe I'm doing uh, naked squats to reduce objective load with someone who has injuries. Or maybe I'm doing um, you know, long pause bench with someone who spent most of their bench career just doing uh, touch and go style benching or maybe there's a stability issue or whatever. There's always a reason as to why I program a variation and there's always a good reason. Now, the beltless sumo pause deadlift is something that I program for pretty much every sumo puller at some point. And the reason why is it teaches position better than what I've found any other sumo variant to do. However, you have to do it the right way, okay? So before we even get into the semantics, I'm gonna splice some clips of my girlfriend doing this and some of the cues that she really works on uh, when she's pulling uh, beltless paused uh, sumos and, and kind of what she's trying to achieve. And really the, the end goal is a vertical torso position, a ton of quad and glute drive, and a very rigid back, and opening up into the lift. You'll notice when she performs her beltless sumo pause deadlifts, she's really opening the hips up, getting the knees out, getting vertical after she breaks the floor. And I have a video dropping after this video, or I might even release it the same day as this video. It's already filmed. Um, where I'm gonna go over some of the cues that she uses for the sumo deadlift and how I teach the sumo deadlift and certain things that need to be in place that I see people make mistakes on. And so I want you guys to watch that and kind of follow that along and take that and add it to these beltless paw sumos. So what you're trying to achieve with this is better positioning. A more vertical torso, which we achieve by opening up the hips, getting the knees out, a more rigid back, which we achieve through um, remaining tight throughout the lift, especially when we're pausing, and then a ton of quad drive, really ensuring with that rigid back that we don't yank on the bar or anything like that, that it's all produced from the lower body and the back is really just a main stabilizing piece holding everything together. And that's the goal with this, very clean reps like you see her doing. Now, how am I gonna program this? Um, well, for a general purpose, we're gonna go two sets for our top set. We're gonna have a set of five, and a set of four, and both of those are gonna be at RP6 the first week, then a repeat at RP6 the second week, and then two final weeks of RP7. 
always at uh, sets of five and four. I like a lot of volume on this and I like it to be very sub max. We're never gonna touch an RP8 here because that's where we risk losing that rigidity, that position. This will not work if you cheat these RPEs, I assure you. Especially if you already have technical errors in the sumo pole, this is just gonna worsen it if you end up doing these. I've actually seen this exercise go wrong, which is why I was weary about putting it in here and which is why I wanted to do the demo of sumo pulling to ensure that you guys are doing this properly. If your reps don't look like my girlfriend's, you're not gonna get anything out of this exercise and you might even worsen some stuff, okay? So top sets are fives and fours. We got two of them. And then we back down and do two sets of five at these set percentages, very light. You'll see, even though this is beltless and paused, 64%, most people beltless and paused could probably pull a sumo deadlift like that for anywhere from eight to 10 reps in the worst case scenario, maybe even more. Um, but we're just doing sets of five with really light weight building up in the weeks so we can again work on position, tensioning, technique, all the things we're trying to get out of this and just getting some good volume in. Even though it's nowhere near failure, again, volume is the main driver of adaptation. So that's gonna be that first block in the sumo poles. Second block is gonna be um, the same thing, but we're gonna undulate upwards in intensity volume, the rep volume specifically goes down. So instead of top sets of five and four, we're dealing with top sets of four and three, and then back off set four, same idea here, tons of carry over to the main pole, and, and really nothing different there other than going a little bit heavier so we can really um, get some novel stimulus out of this, this uh, guy and get this, this movement here a little bit stronger. So we got our comp deads early on in the training week, that's gonna be our heavy day. And then we got this technical slash higher volume uh, day for the sumo pole. And that's gonna be those first two blocks. Now the final block, we bring it back full circle kind of like we did for the conventional deadlift. We're doing five sets of singles at the uh, set percentages there. You'll see I added a deload week, a D for the deload, that final week, just to give you a break before your next program. If you wanna go in and, and just run this again, or if you wanna run another program, um, this is a non-peaking program. Again, I hope you watched all the videos before this, otherwise you're not gonna understand anything I'm really saying here. Um, and, and so I'm not actually peaking anyone out. We do hit those heavy singles again at the end of the block, or excuse me, the end of the training cycle. Uh, so you're gonna see your strength improve quite a bit, but it's not true peak strength like you'd peak for a meet. We basically just build you straight up into those singles. You'll hit some good PRs, but you still have a good amount of fatigue on you. So that final week, I give you just like a slight deload on deadlifts. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now the singles there, something I wanna touch on that I didn't really touch on in the conventional deadlift video is, I don't think there's anything more specific that you could do um, for a deadlift than pulling a lot of kind of heavier but still sub-max singles. And I don't think there's anything that has more carryover to really strengthening your one rep max, or I should say not strengthening, but getting your one rep max technically sound. During this block, I want you focused on really perfect positioning and just ripping those up without losing any positioning. So it's kind of a balancing act of trying to be explosive on those singles as hard as you can, but not losing any position. And when you practice this, it gives you a ton of practice for that heavy one, almost one rep max coming at the end of the training cycle. And this is something that for the squat this works, for the bench press this works, but more than anything for the deadlift, because there is no stretch or reflex, there is no eccentric lowering portion of the lift going into the hole like we do in a squat or down to the chest like we do on a bench press. You don't get that stretch reflex and you don't get a chance to kind of load your muscle. You're pulling from a dead pole, a dead stop. You literally have to move in perfect position and if you don't, that's where we see people miss uh, some numbers they should be hitting for the one rep maxes and that gives you a ton of practice to go ahead and do that. So that's pretty much everything for this video. In the next video, I'm either gonna attach it onto the end of this video or it's gonna be uploaded the same day as this. Uh, we're gonna go over accessory movements and the outline of the program, how you're gonna put all this together in a training week to have those blocks. And then on that video, the Excel sheet is gonna be a part of it. That's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, um, leave them down below, give the video a thumbs up, share it. It actually really does help the channel if you share this with friends. More than anything, I'm just trying to get information out there. The channel is unmonetized. I make zero dollars from this YouTube channel and I don't ever plan to monetize it. I just wanna share information, so get this video out there for me uh, so we can make everyone a little bit better at programming. That's pretty much it, guys. I'll see you in the next one.